This episode is brought to you by the Boneyard Huskies Club. The Boneyard Huskies Club empowers UConn student athletes while providing UConn fans with access to exclusive community, utility, and rewards. The Boneyard Huskies Club is excited to announce Locker Mania. If the UConn men's basketball team wins the NCAA championship, fans who purchase a Boneyard Huskies Club men's basketball 2022-2023 season collectible will automatically receive full credit back for each purchase and the athletes will still receive the full revenue from sales of their collectibles. For more information, go to BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. That's Huskies with a Y-Z at the end, BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. All right. I joked with Coach Gerlison at San Francisco when he came on to preview St. Mary's that I was going to need to have him and his staff on speed dial should UConn get matched up with Gonzaga in the Elite Eight, and here they are. So joining me today... This guy knows everything Gonzaga. He played for Gonzaga uh, at, at USF. He helped scout these games against Gonzaga. So Kyle Bankhead, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. So for starters, give me the kind of 30,000 foot view of this Gonzaga team. I, you know, everyone's familiar with the Gonzaga name now, um, but tell us a little bit about this team this year and kind of what sticks out to you initially when you think of them honestly uh offensive juggernaut i mean they, they've been i think the first time we played them i think their growth from that time to now from an offensive perspective has been astronomical they are very very difficult to stop they want to play with a lot of pace they want to get up and down they want a lot of possessions um, you'll see a lot of teams that try to slow it down against them but they want the pace at a high high level they want as many possessions as possible um they, they want to run they want to shoot threes in transition, and they want to get Drew Timmy the ball deep post catches early. And if they're not doing that, uh, they're going to try and do it later in the possession too. Yeah. Obviously, Timmy's an unbelievable player. I think he's the best post player in the country. He is a he is a monster to stop one on one down on the block. I mean, it, there's there's times where if you get a stop down there one on one, it feels like a lucky thing. I mean, he he is phenomenal. His footwork's great. He's got like his all-time leading scorer. I, I think everything starts with him. And then I think you you got great pieces around him. I think the guards have gotten a lot better from Hickman, Bolton. Strother is, uh, I think Strother's an NBA wing. Uh, I mean, he obviously had a huge, huge shot last night that was incredible. So they have a lot of pieces. They have good guys coming off the bench. I think Ben Gregg's an underrated piece. I think Malachi Smith's an underrated piece. I think that they had Malachi had a great game last night. And then Watson's an underrated piece. A lot of times he doesn't do his stuff with scoring, um, but he's a great defender, great rebounder, uh, blue guy that gets a lot of stuff done that doesn't go go seen in the box scores. So just looking at this team from a very high level, it seems like it's almost the polar opposite of the St. Mary's team that UConn went up against last week. Is that how you, how you view it? Yeah, I, th I think it's a contrast to styles. The St. Mary's is uh, one of the slower paced, very, very physical teams, very kind of regimented in what they do every single time down. Um, St. Mary's is just a different animal. Gonzaga is a lot more like free flowing motion. A lot of guys, different guys touching the ball. Like it's, it's a lot. So yes, I, from the standpoint of what UConn will see, there is going to be a major difference between St. Mary's and Gonzaga. But the one thing a lot of people may not know watching our conference, both are very, very high level teams. St. Mary's a yeah. phenomenal basketball team extremely well coached and Gonzaga has kind of spoke for itself over the years, um, making another run deep into the NCAA tournament. So well coached, they're going to have a great game plan. I think it's going to be a heck of a basketball game. You mentioned them being an offensive juggernaut. If you're going to slow this Gonzaga team down, what, what are some of the keys that when you were scouting for San Francisco to say, Hey, if we're going to win this game, we're going to have to try to do this and that to, to try to slow them down a little bit. Yeah, well, for me, I I think the the initial thing that we did, and I thought we did a great job of it the first time we played them. You look at you look at what we did the first time we played them. We held Drew Timmy to three for three for sixteen from the floor, um, probably his lowest output of the year um, from that regard. And um, I, I think everything starts with him, and I can say this because hopefully he's graduated and not coming back next year. Our our goal was to frustrate him. Uh, that was a big part of our goal. Um, I thought it worked really well the first time we played him. Um, he went three for 16, had a rough go of it. Um, they ended up tipping a ball in with seven seconds left in the game. 
to win. We, we had led pretty much the entire game. So from our standpoint, that was a big, big key for me scouting them was just frustrate him, frustrate him, frustrate him. Now that's a lot easier said than done. A lot easier said than done. Uh, he's hard to double because he's a good passer. Um, and the second time we played him, we played him at their place. They got us. Like, they, they got us. We did not, we didn't play very well. I thought they did play well. Uh, and then I thought we played them pretty well in the conference tournament game. Uh, we, we, we lost to them in the conference semis. Um, again, we, we had kind of developed a new way to hopefully frustrate Timmy. And a lot of what we did was back off their, their fours and allowed them to shoot and just kind of hope they missed. That's the really Anton Watson. Well, in the conference tournament game, they came out and they just kind of said, okay, you know, let us have these shots. We're going to knock them down. And they just, they, I think they made five combined in the first half. And we were banking on a couple misses, more misses uh, out of them. And that, that hurt us. But I thought we did a good job on Timmy. And then you look at the box score at the end of the game, he had 17 points. So um, we, we, we had a different game plan. We actually mixed up some coverages. We went uh, low side double on them. We played some one-on-one -on, -one on them. Uh, I, I, I was very pleased with our game plan in the conference tournament. Just unfortunately, uh, they, they they were good. They beat us, but we had it to a two point game in the second half. Yeah, when when you talk about frustrating him, UConn's got two really good big guys, and Adama Sanogo is six nine, you know, built like a, a boulder there. And then you got seven two Donovan Klingon coming off the bench. How do you think Timmy responds to dealing with guys of that size? Well, the, the, I have watched uh, UConn's NCAA tournament games. I'm not real – I haven't done a good job of familiarizing myself with the roster, but the one thing I noticed, especially when they watch St. Mary's, was how physical UConn is. They have true size, they have strength, and I think they have a lot of toughness. So I think they're, they're going to be able to throw some different bodies at Timmy. I think that will be a, a part of what they're going to look at. I, I That's my guess. Um, but I will say this, Timmy's been tremendous against any one-on-one -on -one player he's gone against. He's gone against guys that are much taller than him. He's gone against guys that are shorter and quicker than him. He's an incredible talent down on the block. So I, I think UConn will be able to throw those different bodies at him and throw the different size at him and quickness and all that stuff. But I, I would I would I would be careful to just say one of those guys is going to do a good job on him. He is very, very good against any type of defender. He's that elite, in my opinion. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosol's Meats. This fourth-generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosol's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. If you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a UConn fan-owned business. And now, back to the interview. Outside of Timmy, if you had to kind of target a, a second player there that, that you're really putting some focus on outside of him, who's the guy that, that you've got circled there? I, I think that's hard. I think they're all three of the guards from Hickman, Bolton, Strother, they all – can have big games. I think kind of down the stretch of the season, it, it really ended up being Strother a lot of times. And obviously mm -hmm. he hit that shot last night. He, he's a tremendous talent, but like for us, Bolton killed us. Bolton was like the guy that got us seeing Hickman get some teams. Like, I think if for whatever reason, if, if you do a good job on one or two of those guys, the other guy seems to have a big night. So I think you got to be really careful with that. And then if you somehow forget about Watson, he is very capable of, rim running and transition, making open threes, driving the ball, getting offensive rebounds. So like they get it, you can get it from all angles uh, when playing them. So it it's hard to, I think it starts with Timmy, but I think after that, all those guys are capable of having big nights and can really help the team. And that's not even talking about the guys that come off the bench. Malachi Smith, I think had 16 last night. And then Ben Gregg had a big game against us. So I've seen it out of him. When you look in, in kind of, look at the flip side of things for Gonzaga. How, how is this team vulnerable and, and what are you looking to attack in them that, you know, you might be able to exploit to, to pull out a win? Uh, man, I, I wish I had the answer. We, the way we scored, we had, we had two quick little guards that uh, are hard to guard in space. And I thought we did a good job at times spacing them out. And, and our two guards were able to create shots for themselves and others. Um, 
I do think, uh, and again, I don't know UConn's roster that well, but like speed and quickness sometimes can allow you to break them down defensively. Uh, at least you could this year. Um, but that being said, I think their defense got a lot better throughout the year as well. It was something they developed. I think I think they're hard to score on. Like everybody, when they talk about Gonzaga, is you talk about offense, you talk about offense, you talk about yeah. offense. It's my, I've coached in this league a long time, and I think they're underrated defensively because of the talk is always about how good they are offensively. Now, they don't have necessarily the rim protector that they had last year with Holmgren. Uh, that's one thing I would say. So potentially size and scoring in the paint may be a little bit more prevalent. I wouldn't say that, but uh, I think, I think, and Gonzaga does a good job of mixing up game plans. So it's not something where, all right, you're going to see this just because this is what they do night in and night out. Yeah. It could be something different to, different for UConn tomorrow and, and catches you off guard. And the next thing you know, you're struggling offensively. So I don't know if that answers your question. Or not no, it does. That. It does. <laughs> um, you know, you, you talk about frustrating a guy like, like Timmy being a, a key there. Say he gets in, in foul trouble early, for instance. What's the depth like for Gonzaga, especially down low where I, I know UConn's probably going to be looking to feast a little bit? Yeah, re really good. I, I actually think their depth down there in the paint is really good. I, I ben, re ben Greg and Anton Watson are undervalued players, I think, because of uh, or underrated players. I don't know how you want to say it by a lot of people just because you talk about Drew Timmy all the time. Um, but I, I think even when Drew Timmy got to go out of the game, we we got hurt personally when Watson and Greg were in the game together. So like you cannot just relax when Timmy goes out, whether that be in foul trouble, whether that be him taking a, a break uh, at a meet just before the media or whatever. Like, it is not that easy. Those guys can play and, and it'll be a little bit probably different style when Timmy goes out probably the ball might move a little bit faster they might not throw it into the post as much but it'll be just a little bit of a different mode for them and if you relax I think you can find yourself in, in trouble I'll wrap with this one uh you, you mentioned how you had to play them in the conference tournament so you've obviously played Gonzaga in Las Vegas from what mm -hmm. I've heard they they really get a pretty good stronghold on that city what's it like playing them in an atmosphere like that well, they travel well. It's it, you know, I, I played there. I've coached against them. I know the people up there very well. It is a very strong fan base. I, I do, I do think it's one of the best fan bases in the country. And they are, they're going to be there. It's easy. There's, there's nonstop flights for a lot of people to get to, get to Vegas from Spokane. Um, it, it is also one thing that's unique about Gonzaga is a lot of people can't get into the home games there because it's always sold out so like yeah. these are opportunities when they get in the NCAA tournament and they're in Las Vegas that some of the fans that don't normally go to the games they make sure they get to games like <laughs> into the bigger venues when there's more seats yeah. so they're going to have a lot of fans there I, I I know UConn's tradition um I I know they're going to have a lot of fans there I think it's just going to be an elite big time basketball game in a big time environment Awesome. Well, well, Coach, I really appreciate the time. Thanks so much for coming on to give us a quick scouting report on, on the Zags. Appreciate it. Yeah, you got it, man. I appreciate you having me on.